sweet. This is the uh, lower hinge on the driver's side. I trimmed off the tab that was bent that I had cut and uh, bent with the uh, bandsaw earlier because this one has to be it was inch and three eighths longer. Um, so I made something like this. Now, this is an original. If you notice, the hole between here and here is pretty distant. These two a little closer because this is a copy of the one that goes on the door post. Um, if you remember, the hole that was here was kind of off the edge of the plate almost. And um, this time making the new ones, I moved it in to match the ones in the door. But this is the same as this. Of course, it's for the other side. But, um, I had to trim it back about an eighth of an inch to make it match with the top one right here. So this piece is going to be welded on to there like this, right on the corner. Let me get this out of the way. This is going to be welded right there. And that one's right there. And now the pins line up. And that should be it. Um, I made new panels for the doors, new plates for the doors. Let me see if I can bend this straight. Okay. Now that one's straight. What's going to happen is um, this one you see with the three holes here, that's going to be cut off. And it's going to be like this. And my new one is going to be connected to it like this. At the 3 8 spacing. Wish it would stay, but it won't. Everything falls in this garage. Uh, let's do it on the floor. All right. So this one's going to be cut off right there. And that's going to be its replacement. Let me set it in there. Bingo. And there's my hinge cure. These edges can be cleaned up. Um, I bent the tab to meet the 50 degrees that I want to hit. That way when the door opens, it only hits 50 degrees. Just got to get it welded. That's it. It's 7 o'clock. I really shouldn't even be out here, but it's a hell of a... My hinge, instead of bending it to that angle... Where it met the thing, I bent it all the way around, and it's got a little clearance issue, but not that bad. It still has play, and it could go a little more, but I want to get, I want to get it flush with the firewall, and that's where it's going to stay. So here's our doorpost, mostly. Let me see if I could use this one and show you. Now this is a bottom plate, but if it was the top plate, it would be connected like that. That way, when the door shut. It'd go like this but not a big deal we got it that one's gone that's the replacement there's one of them bolted on right there it's going to be a lot of grinding to clean these up and stainless steel doesn't just disappear like metal it's a lot of grinding an oxide flapper almost wants to disintegrate while you're grinding stainless so we're going to have to use some hard stone But there's my offset now. It's uh, out an inch and over, I think it was an inch and an eighth. Um, I'm going to clean up a few things. Probably sweep the floor. It's a mess. And uh, go in. 
So I have to sleep a little more today. I can hear my buddy out back banging stuff around. But yeah, it's nice to get a hole a little closer. Um, I do have to drill that hole, of course. I haven't yet. Um, I broke the welds on the uh, tilt for the pan. So I can, uh, if I cut this weld, which it is now, I can actually tilt the firewall back and forth. I did find out that it's about uh, not even quarter of an inch tilted forward too much, and I have to bring it down. I might leave them uncut until I get the body cranking, but what happens is this 3 16 plate that this is bolted to wants to come out. If I put a clamp onto the, the bar down there, there's a hole you can kind of see. There's a hole right here. If I clamp them, I can suck it in almost an eighth of an inch. That's why I have this little gap on the sheet metal. And that's why this one doesn't have it. So yeah, that's another thing bowing the door out. I might have to do that sooner than I thought. Wish for something temporary, like I could put a bolt through it, but there's really nothing behind it to grab the way it's made. <clears throat> Alright guys, have a good day. I'm going to do what I can here, and uh, I want to have all these pieces prepped so I can bring them to my friend Ken and have him weld them up. Uh, it would be a little tricky welding this one on the corner, but not too shabby. I had to say not too shabby, didn't I? Is that my new word for the week? I have to cut these completely off on the bottom one, and I have to uh, cut that one halfway. The top one has to be cut with the bandsaw halfway and bent all the way around. That's what the problem was before. Let me get over here. See, I thought this was it. This is how they were going to go. We're going to bend them out a little, and we're good. No, they got to be bent completely around. So this plate has to be like that at a 90. And uh, this one has to be cut off with the new plate added. This one has to be bent over for the backstop. And this one, this plate here has to be completely replaced. Which that piece is right here. I showed you a minute ago. So there's the new one. Points down. Starts there. And I trimmed it to fit the edge. So it sticks out an uh, inch and three eighths beyond the stick. Or the post, the A-pillar. That's what it is. And I'll show you what an inch and three eighths is going to look like from the front. I'll put this down. Um, use my other hand. This is going to be about there, yeah, about right there, not too bad. They'll clean up nice and they're real beefy, but that's what I'm working on. If I do more today, I'll take more video and pictures, of course, all right? A little common sense. Now, since these holes are quarter inch in the hinge plates and the holes in the uh, A-pillar are half inch, what I do is put the bolts on, the taper head uh, bolts on from behind. So when I tighten it down, it centers everything. Now, of course, this hole isn't drilled yet, but it is much nicer to have it close to the inside and not right on the edge of the plate. I'm going to have to drill that soon. Uh, here's the second one I've been working on a little bit. I took the top one off. These two are right here. Ready to be cut. Um, one's got to be cut halfway and bent. The other one's got to be cut clean off. So this is the passenger top. So that one's just got to be cut halfway. And this one's got to be cut clean off to be the replacement for here. Sure, it's a little dark, but uh, I need another light in this end of the garage. It's kind of aggravating. I back up. No, nope, that don't help. All right, gents, have a good day. Go outside, work on your car. I gotta go back to bed for a while. I need like another three hours sleep. I'm half asleep right now. Take care, and thank you for the comments. Here's my uh, 50 degree door opening angle with the uh, backing stops. They just got to be welded, match one to the other, that's all. Sweet. Um, neighbor Don actually restores um, 
I would call it vintage vehicles, 50 Chevys, things like that. Anything and everything, Chevelles. And uh, he says, you got to do the yard yardstick trick. I says, what do you mean? He says, you buy a $2 yardstick and you cut it to the width of your door, which is right here. Mine's 35 and 3 eighths. And he says, you stick it between the door jam. He says, if anything, get four of them. Because this is what it'll do. It'll bend. Um, you got to add an eighth inch spacing on each end. But it'll give you a good idea where the curve of your uh, door is going to be. How cool of an idea is that, huh? So I just sacrificed this uh, $4 yardstick to the uh, invisible door. And it pushes the tub back because the tub actually pivots on this bolt right now. That's an original hole that um, I had always used for a mark point for as far as measuring the body. The other one I had was up here. But that'll give you an idea of the curve. Of course, it's way too much right now. I haven't got it. What I was doing was shimming it up right here. I need a little more. But what's cool is if you even go to yank it out, it just snaps into place and stays there. If you go too high. So it's probably about right there. That's about the true curve of it. But my brackets fell out. Now when I let it go, it's going to go yeehaw. But it doesn't fall out. It's kind of suspended in the body line there on the seam of the door and the firewall and the A and B pillars. So there's another little trick. Cut the yardstick to the width of your door. Isn't that neat? You can do it on the bottom too. It will stick there just as hard. It's like I welded it. It won't let go unless I lift it too high. And of course it's going to fall out. But uh, that's how he said that's how they would match curves left and right because when you got a car that doesn't have any kind of internal framework, you've got to make both sides match, of course. Now, my next thing is going to be B-pillars. I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. And i got to support the whole back inside of the body. But, you know, one thing at a time. I want to get these A-pillars and these hinges and the doors hung and the firewall at the right angle uh, all welded down. And uh, we're good to go. Have a good day.